has found a new home. House. Enter at your own risk. Welcome back to Movie Nights. We're going to be talking about House today, which is not to be confused with the Japanese movie House, which is weird and not what we were talking about. A Japanese movie's weird? Oh, I never. <laughs> You've heard of that one, right? House, the weird Japanese one where yeah. there's all the kooky stuff going on. Anyway, that's not what we're talking about. We're, we're talking, talking about Sweet Home. Sweet Home? Another Japanese movie. Oh. Which had an NES game, which was a prequel to Resident Evil, sort of. <laughs> I'm gonna cut all of this out. Yeah, you should. <laughs> House was a series of films in the 80s um, about just ghost stories that take place in houses. And these were suggested to me for a while, and uh, I checked them out uh, recently with Phelan. What a nice surprise these movies were. One and two, mostly. One and two. I think, like, all <laughs> of them... There's some funny stuff about the later ones, but... <laughs> I think all of them were, like, um... They were a surprise in their own way. Like, mm -hmm. I don't think any of them were unwatchable, but they're all kind of... Yeah, you didn't too. expect, you know, them... Like, especially one and two to be as good as they were. Mm -hmm. The first one is basically a novelist goes to his old childhood home. Roger Cobb. Roger Cobb. He goes to his old childhood home to write a story, and it turns out the place is haunted. This is the ghost that's haunting it, by the way. It's really lame. It's uh, called Sheets, by the <laughs> way. Sheets the Beanie Baby. Anyone who's watched Halloween knows that. Oh, right. So, <laughs> so all the halloween -y fans, sorry to repeat the knowledge you already know. Duh! But anyway, there's this whole backstory going on with this guy where he was in Vietnam. His child went missing at an indetermined amount, undetermined amount of time ago. Recently at least, but enough time has passed that him and his wife divorced because of this. At least a year, I'd say, must have passed since yeah. this. Like, some time, but not enough time to question that the kid uh, is not aged <laughs> at all. We don't know that for sure. But, uh... Could they... have been the next question. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Raj. What you doing? Me? Nothing. Puzzles. It's the same company that did uh, Hellraiser. You wouldn't know that this is a horror comedy from the description, but you it is. You wouldn't know it from the start of the movie either, actually. It's like almost an hour in before it really like starts getting funny. Not quite an hour in, but yeah, it takes a while. Yeah, because it's slow going in the beginning. It's not bad, but you, we were watching yeah. it, we're like, this is supposed to be a, a comedy? Like, this really isn't that funny, it's just sort of sad. And then all of a sudden, there's a point in the movie where it just switches. It was a good um, surprise switch. Like, I didn't think it felt, like, disconnected. Yeah, there it's were elements... not. It actually works really well the way mm -hmm. they did it in it. So it doesn't just feel like tone shift the movie. Like, yeah, like it other... fit crappy things that have tried to do, some comedy and serious stuff. Because they have some elements where there's some kind of funny lines. We wouldn't necessarily call it a comedy, but there are some funny lines in it. But then all of a sudden there's a point, and you can probably tell what point in the movie is, where all of a sudden it's like, and then you get it. That's when the music kicks in and when it starts really getting fun, yeah. I thought. It, like, it's good too, it's like, none of the characters particularly change. Like, you know, the main guy, he's still the same guy when he's doing the more comedic bits. It's not like, oh, what am I? I'm in a suddenly different movie? Like, mm -hmm. no. Well, it's just because the situation is so darkly comedic that all of a sudden it just switches. Mm -hmm. And that's when, you know, it's sort of getting into the climax where he's got to like, I got to do something about this. This is dedicated! To the one I love. There's so many just really funny moments too. <laughs> Where he's watching TV and you know, since his kid's missing, he sees his image <laughs> appear <laughs> and then he shuts it off with the remote. <laughs> it's like one of the first like early funny <laughs> moment. Because I want to get back inside and get started on my new book. You know, and get back to that uh 
Solitude. Solitude. You scared the hell out of me. That's what you did. Sorry. I, I just I thought I'd bring over a midnight snack. Solitude's always better with someone else around, you know? They have George Wendt in this movie from Cheers, and he's supposed to be a comedic character. He's all, got a lot of great lines. He's sort of his nosy neighbor. You know, it's great. Like, there are funny characters and there are funny lines in this, but it never feels like the characters are just trying to be goofy. Like, it stays true to its world. The situations make it funny, mm. but it never feels like someone's just trying to mug, like, this is a comedy. Yeah, that's one of the big things about it. That's why it still works. Mm -hmm. There's some just really funny moments, too, where, like, the police are at his house, and, um, good old Creighton Duke's one of the cops. Yeah, Creighton Duke. <laughs> and uh, he's just looking at this picture and Roger comes out and asks, oh, what are you doing? And he's like, oh, I'm just looking at this. He's like, oh yeah, my, my aunt was an artist. And he's like, I guess. <laughs> my aunt was an artist. Yeah, I guess. A lot of people in this movie, it's like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, like, why would you, like, they say these things, it's like, you don't say this to someone else, or you don't do this. Like, they have the neighbor that comes over and forces him to babysit. Mm -hmm. Just leave, she's leave him with a stranger. It's so funny, because, like, she's just so, like... Where is her mind? Like, does she have one? Like, apparently not. <laughs> apparently she lives close enough to use this pool on a regular basis. Yeah. Because he inherited this house from his aunt who just killed herself. And she used to use the pool apparently when the aunt was still around. Hilarious, yeah, yeah. I know, right? Now that the aunt's dead, she's like, oh, I'm just gonna keep going there, hope it's cool. Hope it's cool. <laughs> and then she's just like, hey, I know when someone wants to work and when someone wants to play. And she brings the kid over and is like, oh, he loves to play. You can go take care of my kid now. Even though just previous to this, the police were called to his house because his neighbor thought that he was uh, attempting suicide. There was a gunshot, so even if she didn't see the police, she would have heard the gunshot. She knows that this guy is unstable, yeah. and like, oh, let me just leave my kid here. Here's some stuff for the bath. Yeah, bathe him. <laughs> what? <laughs> She's insane. <laughs> what the fuck? So one of the elements I like, too, from this movie is that um, a lot of it is sort of like Evil Dead 2, where someone's stuck in solitude and they're not really sure how much is in their mind and how much is um, actually happening. Mm -hmm. Because he was in Vietnam, so he's got some uh, post-traumatic... Non flashbacks. This movie's so weird, too, with stuff like that, because you got these funny things going on. But then he's also having non flashbacks while he's writing his book on it. So one minute he's fighting, like, the swordfish on the wall, yeah. and the next minute there's flashbacks to his friends dying in Nam. Mm. But you know what's great about that, too, is that they have these flashbacks, and that's what he's writing about, too. He wants to write a novel about his experiences in Vietnam. And they have all of those which, you know, sort of show that he has PTSD and that he's not quite right in the head a little bit. But then it sort of comes together at the end when the house sort of starts blending with this other world where they had like lots of really cool set effects where like he breaks through a mirror like when you saw there was a medicine cabinet behind it and then there's this black Yeah, board. I really like that. They do a good job of selling the illusion, you know, that there's a weird portal behind there. And you know how you how they do some of them? Like that mirror oh, yeah. effect would be super easy to do, but it's really effective. Yeah, they just cut at some point to change what's behind there, because he opens it even in the same shot, but then he backs up. I don't think they even cut. I think they just had someone move the panel that had the medicine uh, yeah, cabinet. Yeah, that could have been. That yeah, probably would have been a little too. more seamless than, than a cut. Well, but... I mean, it depends. You could cut that seamless enough as a static shot. Mm -hmm. But, but yeah, either, either way, way, yeah, it looked really good. The effects were really great in this. This was theatrical. Do you remember what the budget actually was? It was like seven three million? million? Three million. Yeah. yeah. It made like 22. It made 22. It was a huge success and the effects were really good because it's not a lot of it takes place outside of the house but they use it to great effect and they have lots of really cool creature effects. Like I thought the the main bad guy, Big Ben, like he looked great. Yeah, he was pretty cool. Yeah. I like his voice too. He's got a great voice for that type of thing. You're pissing me off, Roger. You're starting to piss me off. <laughs> He's a great actor. I don't remember the actor's name. I, I'm Robert Mole, I think is his name. Or Richard, something like that. Look it up. <laughs> House MD, fuck. No, you made a mistake. No, 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 no. 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 Where's no. the real one? Fuller House, fuck off. <laughs> it was Richard Mall. 
of Night Court fame. <laughs> a show which I have never seen. I love Night Court. Do you even know what Night Court is? <laughs> I know what it is. Yeah, I've gotten that for <laughs> Look, I wouldn't be surprised that not- well, I've never seen it. What, it's just a court show? Yeah, I've seen clips. I mean, I don't know much about it. Is, is that the one they recreated on 30 Rock? Anyway, he was good, so you want to explain what uh, the villain's deal is in this? Well, in, um, uh, he gets really injured, so he asks Roger to kill him, and Roger can't quite do it, and then he, you know, he tries to go get help instead, and then he <laughs> ends up getting taken mm -hmm. and tortured. So it kind of sucked. It kind of <laughs> sucked. So his ghost decides to haunt him and then kidnap his kid. He's lucky uh, Roger's aunt had a haunted house, so he had this opportunity to get at him. Well, I think that was the point was he was haunting it. I don't think it was anything but him. Like maybe something from the afterlife followed him or something, but I think it's the not really was clear about like what started it. I guess. But. Well, because he grew up in that house and he didn't say anything about it being haunted, so he didn't notice anything before then. Um, he could have not noticed, but then there's certainly other things in there. So like if he's come, he's certainly opened like the doorway, I guess, to other things because there's yeah. other weird things like those gremlin-y children things yeah. that pull a <laughs> little tag of war with the kid, mm -hmm. which the kid was remarkably good about. <laughs> yeah, either they were working with him, or he brought them with him, or he was the only one behind it, because I think it probably just happened after he got back from Vietnam. Whenever he died, that's when it was haunted, and then the, the aunt knew about it, because she knew once the kid disappeared that the house did it, and she had, like, one of her paintings had the kid in it. What a fucking uh, wiener that aunt is. <laughs> yes, that's what you say about someone who commits suicide. <laughs> she gave up. Mm -hmm. Didn't well, even try to fight the ghost. Just like, yeah, well, you know, she should have. She kind of gave some thing. advice as a ghost, like, oh, Roger. Get, by the way, I'm still hanging myself as a ghost. Look, look, you you already did that in life. Why don't you try something else? <laughs> well, she's the one that's behind all this other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Will you shut? Touchy. His ex-wife shows up because she's worried about him, and all of a sudden she just turns into this ghoulish demon thing, and he shoots her, and then she turns back into her, and he's like, oh my god, I just killed my ex-wife, what yeah. am I gonna do? It's a, that is a very Evil Dead 2 moment there. <laughs> It's similar, but Evil Dead 2 might have been after this. I think mm. that was 87, was yeah. Evil Dead 2, and this was uh, 86. Mm. They're just kind of similar. I don't think either really thought of the other. In tone, too, the, the dark comedy is yeah. very similar. Yeah, and you don't know if he actually really shot his ex-wife, like whether... No, because she was at the end. I was going to say, until the end. You oh. don't know for sure <laughs> if he actually <laughs> killed her, and he doesn't really know mm -hmm. whether that's really her or not, you know, whether... Mm -hmm. The house was just distorting her, or whether it was something else. It's really dark that he thinks that he killed her, and he's like hiding her from the police, and that's kind of funny, but it's also like, oh man, that sucks so bad. Yeah. And then she keeps coming back to life, and he's gotta just keep hacking this thing up. <laughs> Chops and, her into pieces. Yeah. And then please. You're no good, you're no good, you're no good, baby, you're no good. Yeah, I guess no, again, the. The weird tone things with the movie, because it's like, what well, were he possibly burying his ex wife in the yard? You're no good, you're no good. <laughs> that was amazing. I like, even it. the even the severed hand part was similar to Evil Dead, too. As yeah, well. definitely. Her severed hand shows up on one of the kids, and he's got to, like, um, pretend that it's not going on. Mm -hmm. He's trying to hide it this whole time from everyone else. Except for George Went, who yeah. is amazingly useless. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever used one? Or have you ever seen one of these? Oh, yeah, every day. What is it? Have you ever seen one of these before? Yeah, sure. Every day. What is it? And they used him just little enough that it didn't make him annoying. Because he is an annoying character, but he's used sparingly, so it makes it complement the movie yeah. pretty well. He's not overbearing either, so when he is there, it works well. <laughs> Like, and he has 
decent reactions to this crazy stuff that's going on. Mm-hmm. Not overblown idiot. <laughs> <laughs> He's useless, but it's understandable. Mm-hmm. Like, it's like, yeah, I guess, I don't know what I would do in this situation. <laughs> he at least shot the harpoon. I don't know why Roger thought he could shoot it again. <laughs> oh, he was diving for abalone off a of point red. <laughs> Oops, sorry about that. It was outrageous. I won't pay it. Outrageous. <laughs> the realtor was the manager, hotel manager from Ghostbusters. It's probably one of the most important things in this movie. Because <laughs> it was outrageous. <laughs> and then he's trying to sell the house at the end and he says, That's outrageous. I won't pay it. <laughs> <laughs> they threw a fucking grenade. Ghost destroyed this place. <laughs> I can't sell this. It's outrageous. <laughs> You're no good, you're no good, you're no good. Sheets, you're no good. Fuck. (laughs) (laughs) He escaped. (laughs) Oh shit. This had um, an oddly happy ending, which I really dug. Yeah, that's nice. It it was a very sweet ending, and you wouldn't expect it. You kept expecting, like, the when's the da da gonna happen, like all horror movies do. And it doesn't. I think, like, no, no, back around here, like, once in a while you could have happy endings in a horror movie without yeah. always having a dumb ending twist, which yeah. is nice. <laughs> I really liked that, because he rescues his kid from the fake Vietnam, and he basically tells him, like, look, I'm not afraid of you anymore. It's at the Big Ben. Yeah, you know, he like, chops his hand off, and you think that happened for a second, but he's lost his fear in him. And that was really well done because it was a good character arc that he was overcoming the guilt and some yeah, of the things he was hanging on to from Vietnam. Demons from his past, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And he brings the kid out, and then they're reunited as a family, and that's uh, quite a happy ending. Mm-hmm. It was a tight little film. I liked the music a lot and the effects, like it made it feel big, even though three million is really not a lot for a movie, especially a theatrical movie. Mm. So they used what they had really well. So overall, I would say this is a genuinely great movie. Like I'd recommend this if you are a horror comedy fan, and especially an Evil Dead fan, this is definitely a film you want to check out, and some of the sequels as well, but we'll get into those when we review them Mm -hmm. later on. So any final thoughts? You should definitely watch this if you haven't. You heard him. Sorry about that.